Join us as we make these super fabulous accordion holiday balls. They're great to hang on your Christmas tree or even just to throw around your house like Nerf. They're great. No stuffing. All you need is your yarn and your hook and there you go. Accordion holiday balls. Let's get started. To make these super cute balls or uh, Christmas bubbles, you will need your yarn. I'm just going to use three colors, Christmassy kind of colors, and a crochet hook, uh, scissors, and a darning needle. You don't need the darning needle totally. You can pretty much do all of it with a crochet hook, um, but I'll show you. Now the hook size you want to use, I'm using... Uh, worsted weight or craft yarn, just regular, um, you know, super saver-ish type. There are six layers to this, so you can decide if you want to do it um, like in order, like white, red, white, like white in between, like stripes, or if you want to have it balanced because this one kind of bugged me that it wasn't the same on both sides. It's my first one that I did. So I didn't, you know, it's a sample kind of thing. So I was not too keen on that. I don't know. I mean, it's still cute, but it's not fussy enough for me. So my second one, I chose to do it equal, basically, so it matches. And then instead of doing the hanging part where you finish with your yarn, so that it hangs like that from your tree, par se. Uh, I was just gonna leave these ones, like trim my ends totally when I finish them and just hook it with a nice golden yarn or something, a little thread at the top so they hang from your tree like this. I thought those would be pretty cute. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. That's what we are gonna be doing. Now the difference here, this is a six millimeter hook so it's bigger it's like you know that big I could measure it I suppose and then this is a four and a half millimeter hook so let's get started you're gonna pick the color you're gonna do for your star and the color you're gonna do for your like your petals if it was a petal and then the color you're gonna do for your middle join area if you're doing it like me that's how I'm doing mine because I want them to hang like that from the tree. Okay. We're going to start by making a chain and you're going to want to leave a bit of a tail on this because that is what's going to go from one side to the other side and pull it together. So you're going to want it long enough to go through your six layers and tie with a knot. So you don't need to sew it in or anything. but when you're starting you want to leave a tail of about six or seven inches. So make a slip knot and you're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. Put your hook into the first stitch that you made. Hold open this center spot with your finger and your thumb just make sure they're touching and hold the tail down over on this side so you're ready to go over it. Wrap your yarn and take off both loops on your hook so that's a slip stitch. I'm still holding it open with my finger and my thumb and you're going to chain two. One and two. Those two chains are going to count as a double crochet. So wrap your yarn and go into that spot where your finger is, into the center of the ring, and you're going to make 11 double crochets into the center of the ring. So counting your beginning chain 2, it'll be 12. So wrap your yarn over your hook, go into the ring, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off 2, wrap your yarn and take off 2. So that's your double crochet and make sure you're going over your tail. So that's one, two, three. I need to make nine more. So this is number four. Wrap your yarn, go into the ring, grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn, take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. 
So keep going all the way around until you have your 12 double crochet. So I have my 12 double crochet. Remember to count your chain and to count your stitches. You count your chain and then you can just wiggle your finger in between these stitches and that's how you can count to make sure you have 12. Of course you're, you can also count these V's on the outer edge if they're easier to see. Sometimes they're not for me so I just wiggle my finger in and just count like a blind person, like braille. So we're going to slip stitch to the top of the chain two. So push your hook in, trying to get two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn and bring it back and bring it through that loop on your hook. Chain two, one and two. Now for this round, we're going to be doing two double crochets into each stitch. So we'll have a total of 24, including this chain two. So into the same spot as the chain two, just into that weird little hole there that's not really a stitch, go in there and make one double crochet. So that stitch is finished. Now in each stitch, you're going to make two double crochets into the same spot. So we're making like pairs of double crochets. So go all the way around, making two double crochets into each stitch, and I'll meet you when we get back to the beginning. So here we are back down. I've done my 24 double crochets, including my chain two, but just count to make sure you have 24. When you get to this last stitch, you know that stitch before the chain, you can look underneath and see that that whole area is the one stitch. So when you do your chains, you can either do your extra stitch when you finish the row or when you begin. So we did it when we, we did it when we began, so just you're finished there. Don't put another stitch in, but you can always count to make sure. Put your hook into the top of the chain two and slip stitch to join. Chain two again, one and two. Now this round we're going to be doing double crochets, one into each stitch with a chain two in between each pair. So this counts as our first double crochet. Wrap your yarn, make a double crochet into the next stitch. So that counts as our first pair, two double crochet. So now chain one. And into the next stitch, double crochet, and the stitch after that, double crochet. So that's a pair, two double crochets, chain one. So keep doing that all the way around one double crochet into each stitch and a chain one after two double crochets. Double crochet into the stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one. Keep going all the way around doing that and I'll meet you at the end. We've gone around and we have our 12 pairs of double crochets. You can see the space in between them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we end the same way with the chain 1 and then we slip stitch to the top of that chain 2. So slip stitch to join. Chain 1, because we're finished with this color yarn, so we're going to cut it. And you're going to leave a bit of a tail, enough to sew, like weave in and pull, and then tie also. So. This one I leave about a foot, 12 inches, something like that. So you have, and then pull your hook up and your yarn out and pull it down to secure. So there is round one or layer one. And we have our tail at the center and our tail here. We're leaving these tails. So these ones we're not weaving in. We like them, we're gonna keep them. So set this one aside and pick your next color. I think I'm going to use this cranberry. So for the center rings, we're going to be doing four of these. Uh, not, we're going to be doing four of these as we work them on, so not in advance. But uh, you don't need a tail on to start it you can because we're going to sew over it so even if you have like a one inch tail it's fine you don't need to have any extra yarn there so make a slip knot put it on your hook 
and we're going to chain 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So take your hook and put it into that first chain in the center of that first V. It doesn't matter if you have one or two strands on it, just get your hook in there. Grab your yarn and bring it back and bring it through the loop on your hook. Oops, was violent. Okay. Now lay your tail all along the top of your chain or the side of your chain so it can go over it. I just pinch it down and then chain two, one and two. So now we're ready to start. On this one we need to do 24 double crochets, so 23 because we count our chain two. So keep going doing that. You're going to go into the ring and over your tail until your tail is gone. You don't have to worry about sewing it in the other way or being fussy about it. You just keep going over until it disappears. So you need to do 23 double crochets on this row. I will meet you when you have your 23 plus chain 2 for a 24 count. So we have our 24 double crochets into that ring. Just count to make sure you have 24 and remember to count your chain 2 as a double crochet. So slip stitch to join in the top of the chain 2 and chain 2, 1 and 2. Now into this next stitch you're going to make a double crochet, just like regular, into that stitch. Now you're going to grab the piece you made first, your layer one, and put it down. You're going to put round two, or layer two, over top and pull that center tail through, because that's going to be pinning it together later. Now into these spaces, these chain one spaces, we're going to be working into every other chain one space. So, and don't worry about the tail from your first round. Just put your hook in, you're going to slip stitch. So put your hook into the space, grab your yarn and bring it back, and bring it through the loop on your hook. Now you're going to do a double crochet into your layer two, into the next stitch, and another one into the next stitch, and a chain one. You're still doing pairs of double crochets. You're doing a pair and then a chain one and then a pair, one and two, and then a slip stitch. So instead of just doing chain ones like we did for our first layer, we're doing, we're alternating between chain ones and slip stitches. So line it up on top. You can use stitch markers if you like, but you'll see where they go and then you're going to skip one of those chain one spaces and go into the second one. But it's also right where it lines up, so that's kind of easy. Just put your hook in and slip stitch to join. So now you're going to make another set of two double crochets, a chain one and two double crochets. So one into each stitch. So double crochet into one stitch, double crochet into the next, chain one, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. So that is our set. Two double crochet chain one and two double crochet. So line it up on top of your previous layer or skip a chain one space and go into the second chain one space. Put your hook in and slip stitch to join. Now you can kind of drop your first layer. You don't have to hold it anymore. Wrap your yarn and you're going to do another set of two double crochets, a chain one and two double crochets. So there's our two double crochets, there's our chain one and two more double crochets. One and two. So now we're ready to slip stitch. So into the second chain one space, slip stitch to join and go back to making another set. So double crochet into one stitch, double crochet into the next, chain one, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, 
So we've finished our set and we're going to slip stitch to join. So into the second chain one space. So there's one space, we're going to go into the second space and slip stitch to join. Back to doing our sets. One double crochet in one stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, one double crochet into the next stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch. Now we're ready to join because we finished our set. So into the second chain one space, we're going to slip stitch to join. Now you can see we just have this little bit left because we've slip stitched around. We're almost finished. So we'll do the same thing. Double crochet into the next, into both loops. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one. And you'll remember where we started was a chain two and a double crochet. So that counts as our first pair, I suppose, half of our set. And this here counts, this, these two double crochets with a chain one count as the other half of that set. So we're just going to slip stitch to join the chain one to the double, to the chain two, I guess. That's what it is, really. So slip stitch to join. So there is layer two finished. Super cute. We're going to cut this yarn. So chain one. We don't need a long tail. We're just going to weave it into the center part here just to get it hidden. So just a few inches is fine. About four inches, three inches, four inches. Pull your loop and hook up and pull that knot down to secure. So now we're going to sew this tail in here right now. And this is part of the pattern. You can't really go back and do it later because it's going to be hard to get to. So just wiggle it down. You just don't want it on the edge, basically. So just take it down somewhere to the center and then underneath a few of those nice fat loops. If I could. There we are. And now you can just cut it off. there it is. That's the next, that's layer two. So we're going to do this four more times. Well, three more times for that. So our next color we're, I'm going to use is green, this olive, olive green. So we're making the same round again as this, this red one. So we're going to do a chain 12 and we don't have, we don't need a tail for this round. So make your slip knot right at the end of that yarn. Just so you have a little bit left. Don't need too much. And bring your loop size down, put it on your hook and chain 12. slip stitch to the first chain to join. Chain two, one and two. Hold your tail down and you're going to do your 23 double crochet. So I'll meet you when you have your 23 double crochet plus your chain two for 24 double crochet. So I have my 24 slip stitch to the top of the chain two to join and chain two. One and two. Make one double crochet into the next stitch. So that counts as two double crochet. Oops. My yarn's being crazy. Pull that tail through this layer as well just to keep it keep it on top. And now, for, the, for where we've been, for the layer two, there is a spot, one of the chains we've slip stitched and one is open and loose. So it, we're going to be working into the open and loose ones, not the ones that are pinned down. So slip stitch to join in one of the loose 
chain one spaces it doesn't matter which one just pick one and slip stitch to join now you can kind of drop your the layers chunk and make a set into the ring you're working on now layer three of one double crochet into one stitch one double crochet into the next a chain one and one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet into the next stitch so you're still building those sets I'll get it all laying nicely now into the next chain one space that's loose or you can lift up not pin down slip stitch to join so now you're going to keep working your way around the same way making your sets of two double crochet chain one and two double crochet and then slip stitching to join all the way around and I will meet you at the end of this round at the end of this row I've chained one, I've slip stitched and made one double crochet so I'm going to make my next double crochet my second one there's a knot there but I'm just gonna leave it it'll probably bother me later though <laughs> anyway and chain one and slip stitch to the chain two top of the chain two to join there we go so now that round is finished as well and actually I'll be slip stitching to where that knot is so it might be covered up if you're doing something super fancy or using really fancy yarn obviously you know don't put a knot in there but I don't think anybody's gonna notice it on my cute little Christmas decoration okay so chain one and we're gonna cut our yarn we don't have to cut too much just maybe three or four inches just so we can get it down into the middle again so pull your hook up and your yarn out and pull that knot down to secure now we're just gonna wiggle that yarn into the away from the edge basically so it doesn't bug us let's pull it down to hide the knot a little bit and then work it down into the fat part of your stitches Somewhere down in there. Good. And cut. And that is layer three done. So we're half done. Now, next layer, I'm going to do green again. You can also use more than three colors. You could use, uh, you could have the same color for your stars and then four different colors. Or you could use it all the same color. Or you could have it six different colors you can even what we, you're supposed to do is actually use your scraps which I think would be really great and I should do it so little tail because we're just gonna go over it and cut it off we're gonna do the same thing as this round so chain 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then into the first chain, slip stitch to join. Chain 2 counts as your first double crochet, and 23 double crochets into the center of the ring and going over your tail. So I got my 24 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch to the chain 2, so the second chain to join chain two, one and two, and one double crochet into that next stitch. Now we're ready to join this one. So pull your tail up through that one too from layer one and then rotate it so that you are at a loose chain one spot and you'll just slip stitch there. So slip stitch to join drop your big chunk and we'll just work into this layer doing your two double crochets my yarn is stuck and 
a chain one and two double crochets. Line it up to your next loose chain one spot, slip stitch to join, and make another two double crochets. One, two, chain one, two double crochets, one, two, and now we're going to slip stitch. So find your loose chain one, put your hook in, Grab your yarn and bring it back and slip stitch to join. So keep working your way around this round. It might be a bit tricky to see because we're doing green on green, but you'll get the hang of it. So there's my two, two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. Into the next loose chain one spot, slip stitch to join. Wrap your yarn and keep going. I'll meet you at the end of this round. So I just have this last bit to do. I've slip stitched, so now into that next stitch, double crochet, and into the last stitch, double crochet, chain one, and slip stitch to the top of that chain two to join. Chain one, cut your yarn, leaving about four inches. Pull your hook up and your yarn out. And then you're gonna do the same thing with this one. Weave the tail down into that center area. So that one's done, cut your yarn ready for so here this is how it's looking on the side you start pulling it you can see it has it's attached but only in spots so that's what we want so that's four layers one two three four we have to do layer five and then one more of these caps so next layer is going to be red so chain 12 one two Slip stitch to the first chain to make a ring. Hold your tail down. Chain two, one and two, that's your first double crochet. 23 more into this ring, going over your tail. So we did our 24. Slip stitch to the chain two. like that and chain two again, one and two, and double crochet into that next stitch. So now we're find an empty, well pull your tail through this one too, find an empty chain one and slip stitch to join and then start making your sets. Two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. slip stitch to a loose chain one and make another set two double crochets chain one and two double crochets find your loose chain one space and slip stitch to join so keep going like that all the way around. So there, I finished joining it around. So I'm just going to do my last chain one and slip stitch to the top of the chain two to join. And chain one to secure my work and cut your tail long enough to wiggle down. Pull your hook up and your yarn out and pull that, that knot down to secure. 
Now same thing for this one. We are going to weave in our tail a tiny bit. You of course can weave it in as much as you want, but it's not going anywhere. So there we go. There is our five layers attached. Now we get to make the lid or the cap or layer six. So I'm going to be using the white again for my, where it's parchment actually. So let's start that one. So this one we are going to use a longer tail in the beginning because we're going to use that to tie with this one. So we want to have enough to be able to make a good knot without being stressed out. So I'm leaving like probably six inches or so. So just make your slip knot, leaving your six inch tail, and chain four. One, two, three, four. Go into the first chain, hold your, hold your ring open hold your tail down with your thumb and hold your ring open with your thumb and your finger and slip stitch to close but I'm still keeping it open chain two and then going right into where your finger is make your first double crochet so now your ring is held open you can let go and you're right in the center of that ring what do I do now there we go Okay. So now for this one, we want 12 double crochets, including our chain two. So, and I've done one double crochet and the chain two, so we need to do 10 more. So do your 10 double crochets into the ring going over your tail. So we're gonna slip stitch to the chain two to join. And chain two for our first double crochet. And now we're doing two double crochets into each stitch. So I'm going to go into that funny little hole right underneath the chain two to count as my first, well, my second double crochet, my first pair. Oh, sorry, I'm out of breath. I just ran up here. Oh, I need a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now make two double crochets into each stitch all the way around for a total of 24 including oops including the chain 2 so keep going all the way around making two double crochets into each stitch for a total of 24 including your chain 2 and i will meet you at the end of this row so 24 double crochets slip stitch to the top of the chain 2 to join now just pull this loop up because we have to take out our hook. Now, this is when we're going to tie this string from the first layer to the center string of the last layer. We're just going to knot this like shoes. Just make a regular box knot. Let's pull it down in there as best you can. They should technically almost be touching in there because it's going to really go in on that side and ding in and this side is going to ding in so make get that nice and tight in there as best you can and then knot it one more time and again so it's three well it's one knot plus an extra knot and then you can just once you know that that's tied really well you can cut those off. Leave about a centimeter or half an inch tail for good measure. And then that is now officially pulled together. Now we're going to do the same thing for our lid that we did for all the other rounds. So put your hook back in and chain two, one and two. And into the next stitch, make one double crochet. 
then find, you can still spin this around, it's not stuck, it's just a knot, so spin it around till you find a loose chain one spot that's not attached, and slip stitch to join. And then go back and do your set of two double crochets, and a chain one, and two double crochets, and then slip stitch into the next loose chain one spot to join, to pin it down. So you're going to keep going all the way around, same as we have been for this last sixth row, and then we get to the fun part. So I'll meet you at the end of this row. So your last two double crochets in your chain one, slip stitch to the top of the chain two to join, slip stitch and chain one to secure. Now you're going to leave a little tail, enough to go around there. So not too much, but enough. Pull your hook and your yarn up and tighten that little knot down to secure. Now this is the fun part. Oops, that's attached. So thread this yarn onto your needle. You can use a crochet hook, but a needle's quicker, in my opinion. And into these loose chain one spots, all the way around, you're just going to put your hook in, like that. And then into the next one that's loose, and the next one that's loose, and the next one that's loose, and the next one that's loose. And then I even go into the first one where our knot is, where we slip stitch to join. So go into that one, so now it's in all of them, and now pull on your yarn. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's so cool. So pull that up good and tight, and then you can decide what you want to do. If you want to have it hanging like that, so uh, like this one is, stripes going across your ball like that and the tab at the top go ahead just sew this in a little bit and then knot it you can leave a little loop you could crochet a loop too but I think a, just one strand of yarn is nice so it's not too chunky on your tree if you're using it for a Christmas tree decoration uh, So just sew this one in Cross. You want these to be like little star shape, so you can give them a little pinch. And you want that opening in the center to be shut. So you can just go back and forth until you're happy with it. So I just go back and forth between the petals and then give them a little massage so they behave come back up and then just go back and forth in the same spot a couple times and that'll be your knot there and then I'll just pull it through the center part so there is our knot I'm gonna pull my yarn quite strongly so I can trim my yarn and it'll sink back inside there so now you can't see the tail and it's nice and secure so now on the other side isn't that awesome we're gonna do the same thing so thread your thread that tail if you cut your tails of course just use another piece of string or like another piece of your yarn now we're gonna go in to these loose chain one spots so you're gonna go, you can decide if you're gonna go up or you're gonna go down. Just do the same thing all the time for each of them. So I'm just gonna go down. You can decide which way, which way you wanna do it. Just keep going into each of these chain one spots. Including the, is that where's the first one? Oh no, that's good. And now pull this yarn 
Maybe I should go into that one, right? I think so. Pull this yarn, and you can see how this one it turned into a star also. So now we actually have a ball, and it's actually firm. I mean, you can squish it, but it is really good, like even for a toddler, like or to play ball in the house, to play catch without breaking your stuff or hurting your children. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Anyway. Um, so now just sew this tail in. You can of course use these to hang if you want. But I think that star is so pretty. I want it to be what I look at on my tree. So I went that way a bit and now I'll go back. And I'll go straight through all of it, out the other side, back the other way. Okay, so that's pretty tangled up in there. Massage everything so it's a pretty little star. And now I can cut this little tail like that. So cute. So if you wanted to hang this one, what I would do, or what I am going to do, although I'm going to use a nice gold thread, but you can, or a silver, whatever color you're using for your Christmas, but just take a loop of your yarn and give it a knot, give it a pull, and give it a cut and then loop this one through these, this center one here. Just bring it under and which way are we going to go? Into this one, right? Yeah. And then under. We should be able to get that knot on the underneath side, so you can't really see it, and you didn't have to sew anything. <laughs> so that's how I would be doing mine, the ones I'm going to use for Christmas, the ones I'm going to use for throwing, I'm not going to put that on. So that's another good way, because you can use it for both things. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any ideas or suggestions for more ornaments that are quick and easy, please leave it in the comments below or find us at any of our contact details, which are also below in the description box. Just click the little arrow and it'll pop down with our contact details and how to find us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and our webpage, of course, and email. So, oh, and WhatsApp. So find us anywhere or just leave us a comment in the comment below. I'd love to see how yours turn out. And thanks so much for watching. Stay hooked.